Welcome to Monet Cafe, your own little personal art studio, a virtual studio at home. This is a scene that I took some video of and I'm calling this episode Painting a Moment and I titled the painting Wind Dancers. It was a beautiful unexpected moment where I just went for a walk while on a trip and these wild Queen Anne's lace flowers were blowing in the wind and dancing in the wind and it was just one of those moments you want to capture and remember. So I did a painting of them today. I hope to do more of the pictures that I took. And I thought I'd give you a little uh, video of me in my studio. I know I'm always zoomed in up close where you can't see, but I thought you might like to see that it's really just a little 10 by 13 room that I work from. Um, Again, this is the studio uh, that my husband and I renovated an old home after the flooding of our home in 2017, and we've been making it work. You know, we don't have all the conveniences we had in our other home, but we make it work. And um, this is just, uh, I, I wanted to show you, I've got a standing easel, I have a sitting easel. This is just me taking a piece of UART paper that I'll use for this painting, taping it up on my easel. Um, I have all of my pastels to the left of me. I'm left-handed. I have that tall... Um, um, shelving next to me and it works really great for having my uh, pastels and art supplies all very accessible. Accessibility is key when you're painting. You don't want to have to stop and run and hunt something down. So over the years I've gotten a system that uh, works pretty well for me. Um, as you can see on the easel there, the UART paper, <laughs> it will warp in humid climates. I have tried darn it to find a way that it won't warp. I put it uh, under heavy things. I keep it in its packaging as long as I can, but uh, you know, lo and behold, it always seems to warp on me. But I have ways that I can flatten it out. I actually have a video where I show you how you can iron your art paper. Now, um, I'm just getting all set up here, and um, I also have, you'll see, my iPad to the right of me on a little shelf. And um, those shelves, just so you know, are from Ikea. I love those little shelves. They're inexpensive. Now, I keep a little box of index cards to the right of me. I love to do a little no-tan. Um, this is not a beginner video, by the way. I mean, it could be a beginner video, but I'm not focusing on beginner videos like I've been doing lately. But um, a few videos back, I have my process in a beginner video of how I create a no-tan or a value study. They're very helpful. Uh, they kind of loosen you up for one. They get your values kind of correct. Um, and it gives me a direction of what is the feeling of the painting? What do I want to capture? what was important about that moment. Again, like painting a moment. Now, I am gonna speed some of these things up in this video. Uh, I think I'm gonna keep some real time at the end, but this is just me. I'm looking at the reference image, and I will include the reference image when you see me actually painting. And I'm looking at some pleasing positionings of these uh, flowers that are called Queen Anne's Lace. I like how it had a sweeping motion kind of going from the bottom right up to uh, the, the top right. Kind of sw it was sweeping around. And um, I liked uh, just the playfulness of the flowers. Um, so this is just to give me an idea of where they are and where I want to place them. And now I'm just doing a quick little value study. This doesn't have to be anything, or it shouldn't actually be anything very detailed. You're basically just getting in um, three values. Well, actually four if you count the white of the paper. A dark value, a medium value, a light value, and then the white of the paper. And again, it's, it's really to establish um, a composition that's pleasing and a harmonious um, structure or foundation for your painting. And I find these really do help me. As simple as they look and as messy as they can sometimes look, it really does help me uh, once I start painting to remember what it is I wanted to capture about that reference photo. Now here is where I wanted to show you a little trick or a tip. Um, I really liked the reference photo had a longer, more narrow format than my UART paper does. Uh, my index card happened to have uh, a little bit more narrow format. It's a, it's a three by five. So I want to get the same proportions on my UART paper as that little index card. So all you do is you take whatever uh, image or proportion you're, you're wanting to emulate, you put it in the top corner of whatever surface you're working on, and then you get a straight edge and you take the top corner of the little um, paper you're working from, in my case an index card, and you put it on the bottom corner, just a diagonal, top to bottom, top left corner to bottom right corner, and then wherever it ends up at the bottom of your paper, 
um, like there I just make a little mark with my pencil right there at the very bottom of the UART paper where that ruler ended up that's where I'm going to I just measure I think it was just like a couple of inches and um, you didn't see me do it but I made a, a line down that and I, I end up putting a piece of um, of uh, artist tape to block it off. Now, here are the Neo Color wax pastels that I'm going to be using for uh, the underpainting. I sometimes forget about some of the materials I have because I have them, some stuff all stacked away underneath these shelves and I thought oh my gosh I love these wax pastels they look like crayons actually um, but the magic comes when you add water to them so here once again I'm just going to I'm actually just using here a new pastel in you pastel they're harder pastels you can kind of sketch with them you could use whatever you have you could use a charcoal pencil I like the new pastels I, I like to pick one that's not black um, and I'm gonna be using a lot of these um, mossy greens so I thought I'm just gonna go ahead and sketch out my um, my little value study uh, where I, I really kind of liked the placement of the flowers and um, just sketch it out with this new pastel uh, I like to focus on, and I'm trying to get better, I'm always trying to get better myself, um, trying to get better at letting the flowers turn. There's um, a beauty to the composition if you can have the, I always say the flowers seem to have a personality, to where they're turning and facing and dancing, like I said, I call these wind dancers, um, so that they're not just all flowers facing the same direction or, um, or static or stiff also different sizes not just turning different ways um, you're gonna have different sizes different layers some are closer to you some are further away um, and uh, I'm trying my reference photo uh, was a pretty good composition so I'm I'm kinda I'm sticking to it to a degree um, but you know I don't like to get so fussy that I feel like I have to do everything just like the reference photo then I start to get too tight okay here's the fun part I've got a like it's a dark bluish greenish color maybe more of a teal blue um, and I'm doing my darks kind of around notice I'm kind of going around the flowers I, I want to keep the flowers um, fairly light um, to remember where they are for one thing I am gonna darken them up believe it or not even though they're white flowers I lay down darker colors before the white so as you can see I'm also um, I'm working around the flowers but I'm moving it kind of directionally I'm trying to keep that momentum of the strokes kind of sweeping up and um, now the sky I am gonna have those clouds up top um, so I'm kinda leaving that blank for now but I, I liked that that blue sky back there um, I'm using more of a cyan blue or a teal blue for the sky. I don't know why. I just felt that mood more than a, a sky blue color. And um, so I'm just kind of working it in and around the flowers. And then I think I'm going to end up using a... Actually, because the UART paper is uh, kind of creamy colored. Oh, now I'm using... Oh, I'm blending in this... It's a really neat um, lavender purple, leaning more towards the blue um, rather than the red side of purple. And uh, I'm just adding some of that in and amongst the flowers and to give that other color I put down a little bit more um, pizzazz. You'll see when I add the alcohol to it, you could add water or alcohol. I use alcohol just because it dries faster. Now I'm adding another purple with these. And again, you will see the pizzazz when I add, when I wet it, um, the colors will just kind of play with each other and um, really look vibrant and beautiful. Now is where I think I actually, I was saying before, the color of the UART paper is actually creamy color. So I, I have a white in this new pastel, not new pastel, uh, Neo Color 2 wax pastels. And um, I use a gray and a white just to kind of get that um, the cloud value in there a little bit. I was actually couldn't remember if they come out very good, the white color. But um, when I started adding the alcohol, uh, it actually did lighten it up a little bit. It was kind of neat. Okay, so I'm about to get finished up here, and now it's time for the fun. Okay, so I'm using alcohol, but you could use uh, water if you want. I even had somebody ask, can you use, um, like, drinking alcohol, like gin or vodka or whiskey? And uh, You absolutely can if you... Um, want it to stay light in color I would stick towards the clear uh, liquors <laughs> I do think um, people have actually used uh, white wine now I'm using I use a, a bigger brush the better for me it keeps it loose so I'm gonna use that wide flat brush I didn't feel like 
going and finding anything else. I have a bigger round brush. Sometimes I use round, sometimes I use the wide one. Um, and then I just had my paper towel there because um, when I dip my brush in the alcohol, it's pretty wet and drippy. So I just dab it a little bit on the paper towel. You'll see me here. I just do a little dab, dab, not much. Because uh, I, I do like the drips. The drips uh, give it that uh, impressionistic feel. Now you can't see right now that the, that light or the white and gray I put down showing up, but you'll be able to see it in a minute. It, it does actually blend kind of nicely. So I'm focusing on uh, sections at a time, basically because if I just blend everything together, it'll become like mud. So, uh, But I'm not worrying about drips. They um, actually drips... Uh, go with the um, the pull of the earth or gravity if you want to call it that and um, they make really great lines if you're um, doing stems or things like that I mean you don't want your stems always straight but or trees um, so the drips kind of enhance things sometimes now you can see that white actually is it's lightening it up a little bit um, so just playing around a little bit here and um, as you will see when I get to the darker colors that's when it really starts to get fun especially because I added like three or four different colors and uh, again I'm working around the flowers but it's not that big a deal if the um, if the alcohol drips in the flowers like it's doing there it kind of gives it that dreamy you know neat feel you see those colors look at that isn't that fun um, and I am also using my brush in a way again instead of just painting straight up and down why not go ahead and get that feeling um, of that energy and that movement that's happening because of the grasses so I'm trying to focus on that a bit and um, really just trying to get it kind of all blended in so I'm gonna speed this up a bit now to finish this I thought I'd add too that a lot of the more recent beginner paintings I've been doing lately I've been doing a warm underpainting which means you just use the warm tones from the color that side of the color wheel in this one I really wanted to get those uh, those cooler tones in this underneath the grasses and uh, so that's kind of why I went with this particular color palette for the underpainting now you can kind of see how it just gives that dreamy impressionistic feel and now let me show you my pastel selections these are the pastels I've chosen and I may look like a lot. I usually don't choose this many to begin with, but I really didn't want to have to go back and pick more. <laughs> so I just got a big variety. These are going to be my sky colors. I have um, a variation in values from dark to light. I even have a little bit of this purple in there. Um, skies, well with everything, you, you don't want to just layer one color it's so much more interesting if you have colors of similar values like um like this blue um like a more of a uh, teal blue and this lavender are going to kind of play on each other a little bit in the sky this is my darkest these two are my darkest this notice is a little more um periwinkle colored um, and these two will be more in the upper atmosphere in this case kind of right in between the clouds and the top and then everything gradually gets lighter in value as it goes down to the horizon or what's behind the flowers and um, of course some of the lighter colors here or values here will be for the the clouds the wisp I'm going to keep them very wispy um, I've chosen for the actual Queen Anne's lace uh, you basically lay down your darker value first and kind of layer on top of them with lighter values. So I'm going to use some of these, you know, the, the little pods that hold them are kind of a warm green. So I'm going to use a combination of some of these greens for that and then gradually layer um, the flowers. I'm actually seeing, they're not just white, I'm actually seeing um, some other colors in there. This is a white that's actually kind of got a little peak, pink or peach tone to it. And uh, some of these colors may um, make it more interesting before I lay the lighter colors on top. Um, I've got some neutral colors in here too that add to where, where you don't want something to be the star of the show or stand out um, more than the other flowers. It's nice to have neutrals that push those flowers back. Like these are, these are both a little more neutral um, for flowers that may be hiding down in the grasses. And I have a variation of other greens in here for grasses and things like that. And for those pods, 
it's the pod right before the flower opens. They're so interesting. And um, oh, I just think God's world is so amazing. And um, they're darker. And so I have some pretty dark values here and some lighter ones to kind of go on top to um, portray those little bits that are about to open up. And um, so I've got a variation of green and some neutrals. And then here I've got, of course, some of my darker colors here, darker values are going to be the darkest darks down in the deep grasses. And um, they will um, help to um, ground that earth uh, before I put down the lighter, wispier grasses on top. So this is um, just something to start with and play around with. And uh, we'll see where we go. And by the way, I have a variation of types of pastels. These square ones that are longer, I break them. Unfortunately, I accidentally broke them one time when they fell off my easel. But um, these are great Americans, and they are nice and buttery. Uh, I prefer Terry Ludwig's to um, the Great Americans. That's just a personal preference. These are Terry Ludwig's. They are so buttery and smooth and great for final um, strokes at the end um, or layering at the end. So any of the ones that look kind of square, little little shorter rectangles, are the Terry Ludwig's. Um, <clears throat> some of these in here, sometimes I can't tell the Sennelier from the Unison, but <clears throat> usually if they're round, mine end up looking a little flat because I use them on the sides. Um, and some of the smaller ones, I may, I have some Jack Richardson in here. These are Jack Richardson. Um, they're rounder like this. And, um, let's see what else I have in here. And of course I have over here, I have the Giro pastel set I just bought. And I do love those. Those really make nice linear strokes at the end of a painting too, because they're kind of a medium to hard pastel. All right, time to get started. And I am going to keep this real-time footage. Um, I believe uh, the painting took over an hour, uh, maybe uh, about an hour and 15 minutes, and uh, just, you know, I enjoyed this moment. Not that I don't always enjoy painting, but there are some times when I'm painting and I'm still kind of thinking about the things that I have to do, and it just, that's a that's a joy stealer. So uh, for this painting this morning, I just uh, enjoyed the process, listened to the rain outside, and it was just a nice, nice experience. And again, it's kind of like the point of this video. You're trying to capture a moment or a memory or an experience that you had. And, uh, you know, that way the painting will hopefully remind you of that moment and that time in your life. You know, there was an old singer, or he's old like me now, I'm sure, uh, Mac Davis, and he had a song called Stop and Smell the Roses. He actually was a really great songwriter, and uh, that's just a good philosophy, you know. So um, anyway, um, here I wanted to point out that I'm putting in shapes of where the flowers are going to be, and even though you might say, but those are white flowers, why are you putting down like a, a medium to lighter value green and um, you put your darks down first with pastels typically now those darker ones that I'm doing now those are the pods if you look at the reference image you can see the pods that open up to become flowers they are darker than the flowers the whites aren't showing yet but again back to the the whites that I'm talking about the the lighter color green I put down first the white has to have a foundation, um, something to, to rest upon. Also, we know that they are part of that pod that opened up. So you put your layers down. The, the flowers, if you just put white down there, they're just going to get lost in that blue sky. They've got to have a, a darker value foundation to rest upon. Okay, so that's typically how we work with pastels. We lay down our darks and gradually work up to our lighter layers. That's the opposite of how it is with watercolor. Watercolor, you usually um, work light to dark. You want to preserve those lights in watercolor because you can't really get it back. Um, you want that luminosity of the paper. So again, I'm just getting in um, the the motion of the flowers, the, uh, like I say, the personality of the flowers, the sizes of the flowers, and uh, I am using a very light touch here. It's something I've been purposely trying to work on, is not filling up the tooth of the paper too quickly. I've Often I've painted too quickly and too heavy-handed, and uh, sometimes that has to do with your mood. Like I said, sometimes I'm thinking about too many things. I may be a little more 
uh, stressed or whatever, but um, if you can just take a deep breath, put on some music, relax, and even take some notes and put next to yourself on your easel, light touch. Um, I think it was Karen Margulis, or she, I think she got it from another artist who said, a light touch is the right touch. You can always go back and add more pastel, but you can't really, uh, you know, effectively, I think, get the, the tooth back, you know, unless you start brushing it out. And I love the efficiency of stroke, where your strokes are put in the right place to begin with. Not that you can't be random, but you don't want to go back and fuss and fix things a lot. Um, now, while I'm working on this, I thought I'd mention too, in my last beginner video, I mentioned how some of you guys have been so sweet and kind, and I think a lot of you from the Mona Cafe Art Group know that, you know, I've had a lot of life challenges and stuff, and I try to bring these videos, I try to bring consistent, just because it's my heart and my passion, and I, I love to help um, artists in their, um, you know, uh, art education and learning, but um, it does get hard sometimes. So some of you have been so sweet to say you want to help, you want to support the channel, and I can't tell you what a blessing that would be for me. Um, I would be able to do more. I would be able to have better equipment. Um, I mentioned in the last video, I just recently had to buy a new MacBook Pro computer I didn't expect. And, um, you know, the Lord provides. Um, but um, I do have other ideas. Um, there is a studio light that... It's not super expensive, but it's just one of those things, you know, you just kind of got better weight on that. Um, but if you guys um, would like to support the channel, I'm going to come up with a way that you can do it. Um, I may create a Patreon account that's more just for Monet Cafe channel support. And I will, I'm thinking I will, you know, like to hang out with you guys or, you know, while I can't give a whole lot more time to a Patreon um providing more videos on there, uh, it could become a neat little thing for those who would like to become patrons for the account and something neat for me to kind of just deal with you guys um, that end up, or ones that want to support the channel. So it might be kind of a neat experience. So I've heard of uh, feedback from you guys and it sounds positive. So I just may explore that. Um, again, feel free to give me feedback on that. Um, I also have a, a PayPal if anybody ever wants to support just one time rather than doing the Patreon thing, um, it is, uh, let me find the name of it again. It is paypal.me slash Monet Cafe. I'll put a link up here. I should, I should include that, you know, in all the videos, but I don't know. I just, I have a hard time asking for any help, even though I could use it. So anyway, all right, back to painting. Enough of that. So I'm just continuing to work here and the main point that I'm, or the main thing I'm working on right now is basically getting where these flowers are. Uh, if there's any smaller flowers, and there actually are some smaller flowers I add at the end, um, I, I don't have to put those in right now. I don't have to work around those. I can layer those and then put grasses on top of them. Now what I'm doing is I'm going in, I'm working around the, the bigger flowers that I've put in and I'm adding the dark. Um, I've, like you saw in the pastels, I've got like three different selections of a dark. I'm paying attention, you may not be able to see um, on whatever screen you're looking at, I'm paying attention to where the darkest darks are. There's some parts in the grasses that are just really dark and, and deep, like they're um, down closer to the ground and maybe a lot of grass is growing. Um, so, and I'm again still trying to keep that movement. I felt that sweeping motion still. I, I actually could have emulated that even more. I think that's what I'm going to try to do with these uh, Queen Anne's lace photographs that I, I got. I got a whole bunch of photographs and video footage. By the way, take video footage sometimes of things, um, uh, reference material, and you can often get way more um, material because you can just pause the video at any spot and take a screenshot. So I got a lot of video footage of these flowers as well. And I think the more that I do, the more I'll loosen up and, uh, and keep that, what I see in my mind anyway. In my, in my mind, I see them just flowing in the wind and moving. So uh, I'm going to do more of these. Um, give me your feedback on that if you'd like to see more Queen Anne lace uh, flowers. And also, anything else you'd like to see more of. I like it when you guys 
um, give me recommendations. I had a recent recommendation from uh, on one of the beginner videos to do more uh, or to do a beginner video on reflections and I actually happen to have footage of that. Um, I, I took one day and did about um, five mm, small to medium sized paintings and I saved the footage so I've got about three more beginner videos that I'll be uploading soon. One of them does happen to have reflections in it. It's not going to focus totally on reflections but I will uh, I will give a little <clears throat> instruction on reflections. Now I'm adding um, that more of a purpley color. Um, even though the clouds are going to be lighter, I'm putting down the dark. See those clouds have a little bit of a, a shadow or like where rain may be starting to accumulate. So I'm getting the darker shadowy arrows, areas in first and um, then I'll add the, the lighter colors on top of that. And I liked how the clouds were reaching kind of out to the sides, so I wanted to keep that energy and, and uh, feeling in the painting. I love, I say this often, but I love how flowers and trees and things reach to the heavens and just seem to praise the Lord. And I think that's why I like to paint them a lot, is it's just like a rejoicing feeling, you know? I mean... It's just beautiful how, how all of creation just uh, has this beautiful harmony and, um, and life and uh, beauty to it. So, all right, now I'm adding um, the lighter. It's a lighter blue, um, but it's lighter than that um, kind of tealy, more teal blue that I put down before. And uh, I'm just keeping, again, a very light touch and uh, continuing to build slowly and gradually with this. I even like this rough stage, you know. <laughs> I say this often. I'm able to look back um, when I film myself and see some of the areas that I may have kept even more loose than the final painting. All right, I am going to keep this real time, but I'm going to add some music, let you guys watch and enjoy, and I'll add some more commentary as I see things I'd like to um, give you advice on. And by the way, the song that I'm using it was like a just a sweet little memory for me. It's one of my earlier videos um, when I first started doing videos. I, it wasn't one of the first ones, but it was pretty early. And it's the song that I used. It's a it's actually one of the songs that YouTube has in their audio library that they allow you to use. And I think it's called "The Temperature of the Air." And um, it was a video of mine that actually got a lot of views. And uh, a lot of people mentioned that they liked that song. And, and I always did too. So I'm using a song that I used in an old earlier video. And uh, I hope you enjoy the music.
getting close here to finishing and I really wanted to try to capture uh, deep within those uh, grasses were some of these really beautiful bluish purple flowers and uh, so I wanted to hide those kind of down in the grasses like that and I just think that gave the painting a little more pizzazz and beauty so I hope you enjoyed this I hope you learned something um, I will continue to keep trying to bring more free videos your way um, as long as I can so I am very blessed to have this channel because you guys bless me as always happy painting <music>